I, to be honest, that was no finger breaking. I started, I started two finger breaking, and I let them off. <laughs> I'll start this video with an apology as unfortunately I recorded a video with Steve Brogan and managed to lose the screen recording. Nevertheless, there is some really useful information in there and we talked all about braking, how you should brake on a track day, how many fingers you should use and what you should be doing in the wet. If you've got any questions whatsoever, then please ask me below because I've got nothing else to do right now and I'll happily answer them. Next week's video will be a little bit less track day focused, but it's actually gonna be an interview with my dad, which I'm quite looking forward to. If you would like to see that one, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get a notification when that comes on. But for now, I'll leave you with this interview with Steve. I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think. Steve Rogan. Hey mate, it's okay? Yeah, you. Yeah, good. The first question I've got on braking is how many fingers would you use to brake? Um, fingers used to brake now, uh, good question because generally most people that I speak to, most people that I coach, they all use two fingers. Um, personally, I use two fingers on the brake levers, on the front brake lever. Having said that, if ever it was coming towards the end of a race, I would always use four fingers on the end of, uh, on the brake lever, just when my brake uh, brake was fading and the lever was coming back into the bar. So just to cover me, I'd always just to get uh, that little bit more leverage out of the uh, brake levers. As I say, more so really, not on super bikes. You wouldn't. I've never really got brake fade, but on super stock thousand bikes where the brakes aren't as good and they get overheated. Towards the end of the race, as you probably know yourself, um, we always used to get a bit of brake fade, but I don't know whether that was just my weight overcoming the <laughs> brakes of the bike. <laughs> what about that time when you were braking with Alistair Seeley and you went for the no finger option? I think, I think, to be honest, that was no finger braking. I started, I started two finger braking and I left them off. <laughs> <laughs> when you're instructing on track days, do you teach people to use the front and the rear brake, or is it just the front brake, or is it? No, again, good question. Uh, I always personally, this is my personal preference, and makes it so much easier for riders, whether they be a novice group rider or a fast group rider, to just use the front brake alone. Uh, because in my opinion, the most bikes that we ride, pretty much all the bikes, uh, unless you're riding a Honda C90, um, every bike that I see on track, the front brake is more than powerful enough um, just to use the front brake alone. By using the rear brake, what tends to happen, what I find, is that it gives the rider um, that one more thing to do and unsettle themselves going into the corner to think about with the feet, uh, as opposed to just set, setting the body position up or maybe even bracing themselves um, and getting that leverage to get the body off the bike. Whether it's Obviously, as you know, uh, it's a lot harder to do that if you've got your foot in the middle of the foot peg and you're using the rear brake. And only, I'll be honest, the only time I use the rear brake is if I'm heading towards a tire or <laughs> and I want to jump off it. <laughs> that's the only time. That's good that's emergency good. brake. That's me emergency brake. Yeah. yeah, the only time we tend to use it really in BSB is a lot of the British tracks have got lumps and bumps and there's a lot of wheelie in, and a lot of the time you're just using a thumb brake to stop the wheelie. But yeah. that is like a fine tuning thing. It's not like something that we'd normally teach on track days. Obviously, in the wet, uh, the only big difference I would do in the wet is just smoothen everything out and don't be as aggressive because, especially in the wet, uh, that just highlights. If you're ever worried about tucking the front or locking the front wheel up, you're more than likely going to do it in the wet. Um, all I would say is maybe rather than try and break in aggressive or in shorter distances like you would in the dry, spread your braking across a greater distance and maybe just apply the brakes a lot smoother and certainly not aggressive in any way because if you're putting low brake pressure on the, foot, on the bike diving really aggressively, especially if, the, if you've got soft front fork springs, chances are you're going to run out of stroke and then the next thing is is you're going to lock the the front tire up and then that's it you're down yeah so yeah again i'd say in the wet definitely a big no-no don't use the rear braking and, and just smoothen your braking out and a real key area in the wet 
is um, do all your braking up right in a straight line. Don't um, don't do any trick. Well, try and trail brake as least as you possibly can on the wet, because again, you're just going to eliminate you know the risk of crashing. So that was my next question. What can you explain trail braking? Why you would use it, and whether you would be using it as a track day rider? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and again, another good question because um, trail braking is something that I personally don't like to coach on on track days because the again the the benefit of the gains that you, that is to be had from trail braking is very very slim and minimal. I like tenths of a second here and there. Yeah, of course, we all trail breakers. Any fast racer or fast track day rider um, will trail break. Um, but the gains is not massive, so in my opinion, I would uh, certainly do all your braking upright, uh, let the brakes off and freewheel into the corners, um, which will keep you in a much safer position. Now, the difference between getting trail braking right or wrong is very, very fine. I was still getting it wrong after 20 years of racing, learning that fine line of nicking that extra little tenth of a second going into some corners just by trail breaking right into the corner as close as you possibly could to the apex. But yeah, it's a very, very fine line. There's there's bigger uh, gains to be had in other areas to eliminate a load of risk uh, rather than trail breaking. So trail breaking is not something that I would definitely be focusing on. Even as a even as a fast group, track day rider, I wouldn't necessarily be... Uh, yeah, you will trail break, but I wouldn't be really trying to get loads of gains out of trail breaking into fast or slow corners. Yeah. Uh, trail breaking is a tricky, tricky fine tune and art, um, especially for any track day rider. Uh, very, very similar thing to ex- explain on how to accelerate fast out of a corner. It's very, very tricky once you start fine tuning that art as well. So trail breaking just... I always explain trail breaking is the same uh, same skill required to wheelie a bike right up on yeah. the balancing point. So when you get a bike right up on the balancing point, uh, whether you use the rear brake or not, the, if you get that, if you get it over that little bit too much, you're going to end up on your on your ear. Whereas it's exactly the same with trail braking. So um, you you basically you're playing with a very very fine line trail braking. So I tend to encourage people not to trail break on track days especially yeah. um, that would be my uh, advice to eliminate uh, 90% of tra- front end crashes that I see on, on track days yeah. you do a lot of instructing in the UK and abroad where can people find you if they want to find more about Steve Rogan yeah um, of course as you know I do a lot of coaching with yourself uh, at Jamie Whitham track training days also at uh, focused events on uh, all the European dates, uh, mainly over in Almeria in Spain, but on some of the other events as well on UK dates. Uh, and obviously, I do my own uh, Steve Bergen Super Bike School uh, dates on selected dates across the UK. Um, so, yeah, you can find them dates on my website, Steve Bergen Super Bike School. Good man. And you've also got plenty of YouTube content yourself with a lot of instructional videos. I'll put links to those from this that people can go watch because there's plenty more good information. All right, Taylor. Cool, mate. See you soon. Cheers, Brogy. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, mate. That's it for this week. Steve is a really good track day instructor, so if you do want to see any more of his stuff, then make sure you give him a follow. As I said at the start of the video, I'll be back next week with an interview with my dad, which I haven't done yet, but I'm quite looking forward to doing. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, please like the video and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.